All right, welcome back to another episode of the Leading Saints podcast today. I'm welcoming in Jared Olson and Matt Brown. Welcome. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah, it's great you, to be here. You guys are like a dynamic duo at uh, Job Nimbus, so that's the company you work for. Yeah, absolutely. We'll is. give them a little plug. Right? Heck yeah, yeah they're know. awesome. That's great. we love you, Job so, Nimbus. <laughs> so, and that's it, based in Utah, Utah County. I mean, the world revolves around Utah County. You know, one of those of software companies in yes. Lehigh, Utah, heart of the Silicon Slopes. Yeah, that's nice. us. And how would you? Matt, we'll let you answer this. How would okay. you describe your positions there? Like, what, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, well, we're on the people team, so our job is to take care of the people. So, so. is that just like a, a modern way of saying HR? Or Oh, yeah, don't say HR. That's <laughs> no? bad. That's... Yeah, because humans are not resources. <laughs> they're people. That's right. Yeah. So the people team. Yeah, cool. people experience, PX, you know, because Xs are cool. <laughs> Ask Elon. He'll tell you. Um, that's right. But, yeah, th that's our job. So, uh Jared's the he leads our team and and my role is I'm the people success coach. Nice. Anything you'd add to that, Jared? Um, we uh, just love helping people wherever they're at and become the best version of themselves. Like culture is everything to us and it starts with leaders. So we spend a lot of time doing leadership development and um, trying to help people achieve their full potential. Yeah. And, and culture, that's really at the core of what we want to talk about. When you're talking about co coaching, we're really talking about how do we develop a culture you know, you're coaching the culture through people, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the culture, when that's established in a healthy way, then a lot of the hard work is already done. Right? So I'll tell you my favorite definition of culture. Oh, let's hear it. Um, it's, uh, so culture is actually, if you tra trace back to the origins of the word, it's Latin for the word cultus, C-U-L-T-U-S. Okay. If you translate cultus back into English, it translates into care. So when you talk about building a culture, you're really talking about caring about people yeah. that work with you. Nice. Pretty good, right? There you go. I love yeah. a good uh, root translation. You know? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, and we were uh, connected through a mutual friend, and, and uh, I was first connected to you, Jared, about just how you're, just some thoughts you have around coaching and how you approach it. And it's got a lot of, I think, helpful tips and tricks that maybe church leaders would appreciate. Because in church leadership, uh, you you find yourself in that coaching position, or you're avo avoiding those coaching interactions. Um, and, and then it's not like, I think we think of coaching, like, you know, obviously in a sports context, but also like, okay, we're sitting down, I'm now coaching you, but it can, it can happen in the most nuanced of ways. Right. Yeah. Any, any, like, like, how would you maybe define cult coaching in general, or what are we talking about? I think every conversation has the potential to be a coaching conversation. Um, really just depending on how you interact with the other person. Mm -hmm. Um, to me, coaching is about asking a lot of questions and helping helping the person through a self-discovery process. And, and that really can be any conversation. Every yeah. conversation can be a coaching, yeah. an opportunity for coaching. Cool. I think a big myth is that it's only between like a manager and a direct report or a bishop and a member of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. Like when you talk to your kids, when you talk to your spouse, when you talk to your best friend, your neighbor, anyone is a coaching opportunity. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, give us a launching point here. Like what, what do we need to, what yeah. groundwork do we need to lay before we really jump into the conversation? So Matt and I are both certified in respect coaching styles. Um, respect coaching styles is actually something that is the brainchild of Dr. David Morelli. Dr. Morelli, uh, got his doctorate, uh, in Colorado, then went on to did a little bit at, at Harvard, um, and created a company that does executive coaching and his dissertation for his doctorate was to really identify what he calls the cloud of confidentiality. So if you think in like a church context, imagine that um, you are a Relief Society president going into somebody's house to meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, right? To provide an opportunity to get some coaching or you're a bishop, somebody comes into the office and wants to talk to you. Um, a lot of people leave those conversations better, right? And they're feeling rejuvenated and excited. And what Dr. Morelli wanted to figure out is what happens in that cloud of confidentiality? What is actually discussed? How does that help the person level up? And so he did a lot of research and the, the result of what he figured out is that there's seven different coaching styles. Mm -hmm. um, and it all comes from this framework. And the framework begins with um, kind of a big term, aggregating contextual considerations. The other way that I think about that is just emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So if you are a bishop, and a youth comes in to meet with you one-on-one -on -one, uh, for a scheduled appointment that you maybe weren't planning on. Kurt, what's something you think maybe that youth might want to talk to the bishop about? Uh, maybe some struggles with school or his, their friends. 
Yeah, right. perfect, right? Yeah. So very quickly, what do I know about this person? They're in school. They've got friends. That's their life right now. Right. So you were in that amount of time able to say they probably want to talk about their friends. So you start with that, and then you pick a coaching style. And we'll kind of run through what those coaching styles are. But then you see how does the coachee respond. And then you loop back to the beginning and say, how can I adjust my coaching style by the questions that I asked or which format that I'm actually using to help that coachee along? There's a lot of frameworks out there. Like Matt is certified in Clifton Strength Finders. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there is uh, Myers-Briggs and disc analysis. And there's all these things out there that help you as a coach know who you are. But this is the first framework that we've ever heard of that actually helps guide you through the course of the conversation. Gotcha. Um, and so you tailor the needs to what the coachy needs. Gotcha. So, and this is, so it's not necessarily, uh, you know, you mentioned these like personality assessments. That's a part of it. But like, I've always struggled with personality assessments and, and there's some people like, I think, and it's probably a majority of people, they just love a good personality <laughs> assessment, you know, and you know, they'll talk about where they're at and they'll do the tests and they'll do the things, but I'm always like, I get it, but what, it's hard, like the application of like, what am I supposed to do that with that in the in the context of a conversation? And so what I, what it sounds like you're saying is this sort of moves you to that of like, regardless of where they are on those personality assessments, here's some things to do in conversation or in that coaching interaction to yeah to move things along, right? Yeah, yeah. And there is an assessment portion. You know, we can assess where people are at. Um, but what I will typically tell people was I'm reviewing their assessment is. From, from this moment on, this assessment is really not, not valid anymore because let's say they were low in a particular style. If I then coach them in that style, then they're better. Mm. And then, and then their assessment the next day would be completely different. Yeah. So, and these coaching styles, you gave me a cheat sheet here. So there's seven of them, yep. right? And these aren't necessarily like personality uh, no. things where it's like you are you are a red personality and that's just who you are yes. and deal with it. And when I talk with you, I need to talk to you as a red person, right? But this is <laughs> more for the, uh, this is just depending on where they're at, the circumstances, yeah. you may bounce around of the different styles where yeah. personality, yeah, you can't yeah. suddenly change your personality. And, and you know, one of the things that we love about the savior is that he was the master coach. Yeah, He was the one that used all of these styles when the coachee needed it, how they needed it. Um, and, and so I think there's a lot to kind of unpack in how are we becoming better coaches? Mm -hmm. Anything else as far as the foundation of where this came from, what we need to understand. And this is like, the, so respect is, that's the, like one, um, how would you, you frame like one style or one program or what, how would you frame it? I'd say it's a framework, it's right? It's a framework. It's the framework that will help make sure that you're using the different style, the coaching styles that the coaching okay. needs at that time. And yeah. the, this framework isn't necessarily, or maybe it is like, as far as, as far as like, this is, cause I think of like CBT, right? Like cognitive behavioral therapy, therapy or coaching. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like there's sort of this, this framework you go through regardless of the, the issue. Mm-hmm. And this isn't necessarily a framework of you go to step A, step B, step C, right? Correct. Right. So, so maybe we should like jump into the styles and then we can tell, and then uh, we can give you some coaching. All right. All right. This, this always happens to me. I guess I'm the host. <laughs> right. Yeah, you are. It's the price you pay. <laughs> uh, well, so where do we begin? Let's start with Rallier. Let's Rallier. do it. Okay. So Rallier is the first R. There's only one R in respect. So <laughs> I should have and... known that already. <laughs> um but the rallier style is a is the driver. So I like to always think about rallier as like someone's in a rally car, what pushes them forward. Okay. So rallier is is setting goals, setting measurables. Um, it's what puts gas in the tank to move the coachy forward. So um, a lot of times I'll use rallier kind of towards the end of a conversation. Somebody comes in with a problem and and we set we talk about it and figure out the plan and then we set these we set a, a goal right mm -hmm. so rally your type questions would be um what's the first step you need to do to accomplish this um where do you uh, you know when do you want to have this particular thing done by um what's the metric what what do you want to measure based on this you know this plan that you have um and the rallier is, is kind of the motivator the driver right to to keep people keep the coaching moving forward gotcha and so this isn't uh necessarily that you're speaking overly positive about things like you can do it like don't it can don't be get down. okay it certainly can be yeah um and that it those would be rallier type uh statements 
Um, but it's really about that driving force, right? Okay. So like rallier is, uh, you know, I like to think about the race car side of it and cause I like race cars. I think they're, yeah, you yeah. know, but, <laughs> but it could be the cheerleader, right? Hey, I'm rallying you up. Hey, it's okay. Yeah. You got this. Let's go. Yeah. Right. And, and would you almost say that's almost like a default position? Like when someone comes to you and they're down or they're frustrated, it's like, cheer up there. You're like, totally, you'll do great. You know, you know what? Like, that totally depends. Right. right? So um, I like the idea of the, the bishop speaking to a youth. If the youth comes in and sit, it sits down and is fine, right, or appears to be fine, right, um, you, you, you might not pick rallier. Or, mm -hmm. you know, if they come in and then they start talking about uh, transgression, mm -hmm. you're not necessarily going to say, hey, you got this. You're going to, you can overcome this. It might be the understanding part, right? Like, um, Hey, you're, you're right. You're, you are imperfect. That's part of the plan, mm -hmm. but the savior's perfect and he'll, he'll help you. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just, it really just depends on what the coaching needs in the moment. I think like FSY to kind of your point mm -hmm. though, like if you were to go to that, those are probably very rallier Lots presentations, rally right? You got this, you'd be a great mm -hmm. youth, go and deliver what you can. Nephi said, I will go and do, right? That's a very rallier comment mm -hmm. about like moving forward and making yeah. progress. And you, you mentioned something that's really interesting. So it's not necessarily like a person is a, a coaching style for a person, but it could be an event like FSY or even yeah. how sacrament meetings run or elders quorum, right? Like even these, and obviously people create these events, right? So yeah. they're, they sort of pass on this, the a certain coaching style through these well, events. Well, and it kind of depends on the, the coach, right? Okay. Because if you go to FSY, you might have somebody who's going to, you're going to sob, right? Yeah, yeah. I, this is amazing. I feel the spirit and all of that, right? <laughs> that might be more of a confidant, like hearing how you were feeling at that time where the rallier is the one that gets you like stoked, like, okay. oh, I can do this. Let's, I'm going to go give out 10 Book of Mormons this week at school, right? Or whatever it might yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just thinking all the ministering interviews or uh, the ward mission leader. Uh, sometimes he comes in hard with the rallyer, right? Like, come on, <laughs> you got this. <laughs> and and the coach, he's like, I don't need that right yeah. now. I need something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Um, the the next one is the educator. So when I think about general conference, general conference is like a hundred percent educator. Mm. Educator is kind of a lecture. It's I'm going to teach you something or fill a skill or knowledge gap. So there's some knowledge you don't currently have. Let me teach that knowledge to you, right? Um, and that's what general conference is. Hey, we went as uh, general authorities. We prayed about this. We asked the Lord, here's the inspiration we received. And we want to teach you what his will is today. And it's about teaching people. So educators really helpful for people who, um, for a coachee who doesn't have knowledge and is looking for that knowledge from somebody else. Yeah. So like in parenting, great examples of, Hey, I was, your kid comes and says, I was put in this situation or scenario. The parent then comes and says, well, let me teach you about how I have dealt with that in the past. Or what have you learned from your friends that maybe you don't want to continue to do, mm. right? Yeah. And it's allowing them to go through self-learning. So it's not just teaching, but it's ensuring that there is learning that's taking place. Cool. And I'm thinking of like uh, individuals who are learning, who want to be baptized, right? And yeah, you're, it wouldn't be good to just rally them. You got to, they yeah. need some substance there, right? They need to know about the first vision, Yeah. right? And they yeah. need to like have questions asked to them. So yeah, missionary work is very educator. Cool. We're going to sit down and teach you these lessons. Now, it, and like you said, as we go through these styles, like there's some styles that they feel like they're the one I should do, but in reality, it lands flat or because it's helpful. Because it's right? all about that aggregated contextual considerations. If you're a missionary sitting uh -huh. down with uh, investigators and you're, you're educating, let me tell you about Joseph Smith, and you can see that they're looking to the side or they're like getting distracted or they're looking at their phone, mm -hmm. whatever it is. You know, educators probably not working and you need to switch to a different style that will then engage them at that time. Gotcha. Right. Like educator is really bad if you're teaching youth Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Let me teach you from the scriptures and read to you these scriptures. Yeah. Youth are like not into that. They want to have healthy discussion and dialogue going back and forth. A, a common dynamic I hear a lot about, and I was this leader too, that, you know, you're a bishop and you keep seeing, you know, maybe so all these people are struggling with pornography and I just get one interview or one appointment after the other about pornography. And if they just understood the, the, the negativity or the, how, you know, why this is so important to avoid. So fifth Sunday's coming up, I'm going to do a fifth Sunday lesson and we're going to really 
hit this hard. And so you sort of shift in that. We're going to educate them. And like you said, sometimes it's appropriate. Other times it may, may not be. So yeah, something yeah. to consider. All right. Should we go to the next one? Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so the next one is strategist. Strategist is about uh, finding solutions to problems. Strategizing. Right? Every husband loves this one. <laughs> <laughs> and not one single wife does. <laughs> yes. Let me, I'll fix this. They you. want confidence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so strategist is, is uh, addressing a problem. What are the, op what options do we have to solve this? What are the steps we need to take? Um, how are you going to, how are you going to solve? What's the strategy you're going to use? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, strategist is the, is the fixing motion. Gotcha. And I know it's like, I get a lot of people approach me about podcasting. I'm saying I've established a, a successful very podcast. Good podcast. Right? Thank you. It's a very With great episode. guests. Yeah. <laughs> great guests. <laughs> With their best. And, and so they'll come to me and usually the, what they're looking for is, is a strategy. Like, how'd you do yeah. it? Like, give me three things I could do next right and so then i shift into a strategist coaching style right yeah cool yeah anything else with strategists that we need to lay out but it seems pretty straightforward yeah strategist is pretty pretty straightforward pretty cool. easy it's it's identifying steps and in, in fixing the problem or awesome yeah i think one one clarification between strategist and ralliers rallier is the next step strategist is solving the long-term issue. Mm -hmm. So let's say you were like trying to get a temple recommend back, right? Mm -hmm. um, you might be meeting with a stake president and working on a series of things that will allow you to get there. The rallier is what's the first thing that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. The strategist is what's this, how are we going to get you long-term to where you want to be? Okay. Yeah. Someone, someone interested in a podcast, you can give them a list of things and then ask the question. So what do you want to do a podcast about? And they're like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. That's the first thing. Yeah. Awesome. When are you going to decide what your podcast is going to be about? That's a rallier question. Yeah. Awesome. Jared, what's next? Uh, next one up is the provocateur. Mm -hmm. So the provocateur is the one that makes people squirm the most, right? <laughs> because it's, uh, it's poking a hole in somebody's logic and it's often speaking the unspeakable truth. Mm -hmm. um, and so when a coach, he goes to a coach saying, Hey, I have this question. The coach will say, are you the problem? And often people are like, oh my gosh, I feel so uncomfortable with this. But it, it's because it it needs to happen at certain times. I, my mind just goes to so many stories of Christ, right? Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. man. He, he, he was really so knew good. how to provoke. Right? Yeah. He is the best for yeah. Think about like yeah. the, the parable of the 10 virgins, mm -hmm. right? The the takeaway for me, so on my mission, we had a visiting general authority come and he, talked, he spoke about how the different um, aspects of the parable. And what you don't have, right, is your oil. And your oil kind of represents the temple recommend. So you go to the temple without a temple recommend, you can't get in. So the takeaway from the parable of the 10 virgins is if you don't have a recommend, you can't get in, which is a very provocateur thing. Why would you want to take somebody else's mm -hmm. if you can't get your own? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he's almost telling that um, parable as like, you may be one of the 10 virgins. And that really, oh, that, I yeah. can't. Yeah. You can't really reconcile that, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's hard to sit with, right? He, I, I think the Savior was really good at being a provocateur with Peter. You know, do you love me? Do oh, you yeah, love right. me? Do you? And Peter's, you know, he's, he's like, he's really thinking about it. He's thinking deeply about it, right? Because um, the Savior really wanted him to, to embrace this concept. And um, I also love the story of the, when they're at sea and the, the storm is raging and, and they wake the savior up and he's, he says, where's your faith? Why mm -hmm. have you lost your faith? And um, yeah, he he's masterful provocateur. Awesome. I think there's a lot of people in the church today that are asking provocateur questions and that that's where some holdup comes for them, right? Of like, what's the answer? Why did this happen? And they, they're asking the tough questions because they need provocateur in their lives, right? Um, and a, a example that Matt and I have talked about in the past is did Adam and Eve actually exist or were they the first people on earth or was there evolution and did it actually get to a point where then there were people here and like that's a very provocateur question mm -hmm. of is it just a story that will help us understand it um and if so why right yeah. poking a hole in that logic trying to figure out what's really going on yeah. here it's happening a lot and I, I truly believe that we worship a god of of paradox right that he'll often put things out there that are they seem like contrary and you can't it, you can't sit with it it's, you know it's almost like no you gotta it's gonna be one or the other right how can we have prophets on earth when but they're they're imperfect like 
are they speaking for you? And, and yeah, so it's right, hard to sit with, right? right? But it's almost like God's like, yeah, exactly. Like he's in, it's an invitation to step into it yes. and, and, and trust in him, right? Yeah. And, and so I can see how that could be, the provocateur could be such a powerful yeah. coaching style. Right? And it really can be, you know, the, the name provocateur has this kind of a negative connotation to it, but um, it really comes from a, a place of love, right? Um, you're thinking this particular way and is that the right way? Is that the way you should be thinking mm-hmm. about this? You know, um, a, a lot of times when I'm coaching people, I'll say they'll come up with a solution. And my provocateur question will be, well, what if that doesn't work? Mm-hmm. What if that's not the solution? Just to get them to to open up a little bit, broaden their perspective a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think for those that are volunteering in church roles are saying, I I can't make someone uncomfortable and squirm by asking this question. And where I would challenge you is I, if you're parents, you do this all the time. Mm-hmm. Why did you think it was okay to hit your little brother? Mm-hmm. Why aren't you getting ready for bed in time? Right. These mm-hmm. are provocateur questions that are poking a hole in logic. Yeah. And so uh, why do we do that to our kids? Because we love them. We care about them and they need it at that time. The same is true as Matt mentioned for other people that we work with. Yeah. And I'm just thinking like uh, the typical elders quorum where we almost want to just, let's just stay in the educator <laughs> column. You know, let's just talk about doctrine. Yep. Oh, okay. That it's guy said that comment. That's sort of that's a very provocative comment. I don't know. Let's de- defuse it. We're going to deflect right? that, yeah, right? Yeah, Instead of like yeah. leaning into it because exactly. what is that? What does that elders quorum need? Maybe they need uh, to go into it more because mm-hmm. Matt and I are those type of people. We love good provocateur in our life. Mm-hmm. Right. Let's ask a hard question and have some real discussion and dialogue in an elders quorum instead of me like almost falling asleep. Uh-huh. <laughs> Love it. Matt, should we go to the next yeah. one? Yeah. So uh, the second E is explore. There, there's two, two letters. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> so the explorer is uh, the, the simple, the simple way I like to look at this is asking the question that you don't even know the answer to as the coach. Right. There's a lot of situations when, you're counseling someone and you kind of have a, a rhythm to it, right? Um, well, Explorer is asking the questions that you don't know an answer to. Um, and it's just to, to dive a little deeper. Um, I think about when people will come to me, they'll say something that's very uh, cliche or uh, uh, you know something that people often say. And I'll just ask them to define it. What does that mean to you? Mm-hmm. You feel overwhelmed. You, you feel like you're drowning. What does that mean to you? Because there, there could be varying degrees of, of what they're feeling to make them say that particular thing, right? Um, this is one where um, I like to focus a lot on my intuition. Like, what is my gut saying that this person needs right now? Mm. Hey, for some reason, I'm thinking about uh, navy blue. Does that mean anything to you? And they'll be like, oh, my gosh, yes. I, the cougars got... Hey, uh, hey, hey, that's, yeah, too soon. Got to, uh, they yeah. try, I don't know, yeah, anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just just being able to, to, to you know, in, in, a, in a bishop situation, uh-huh. it's, it's what is the spirit telling you to ask about? Let's yeah. explore that. Let's talk about that. I love the question of tell me more about this or define this to me those are like my favorite go-to explorer questions just let's let's go a little deeper Mm, explorer also is saying what else have we not considered that's a possibility right so i imagine like a ward council getting together and discussing how to get more out of that they might come to a conclusion of here's how we can improve ward council and then the explorer would say but is there another idea we haven't explored Mm -hmm. yet or um maybe ward council is going great And then an explorer comes and says, is there a way we can improve our time management, right? We have, we've talked about stuff, but what else have we not discovered? It's innovation, it's creativity, it's figuring out what other people haven't seen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking of that revelatory process often it requires that moment of exploration, right? Yeah. Joseph Smith, like it's a perfect, a perfect example. Yeah. It usually was a question he was exploring. Oh, I should go ask. Yeah. I'm going to go have a little prayer in the, in the woods. See what happens. Another strategy that comes to mind with the Explorer that I think it's really effective for church leaders, especially, you know, the bishop or in that context where you're, you know, somebody's really wrestling with a problem, they brought it to you. Um, like Rob Farrell has done this, uh, where he'll take a, a, a scripture story and say, I want you to go study this story about the Savior, right? The one he uses, the man with palsy that's lifted down from the, the ceiling, right? That 
and he he would give that to somebody and be like, we're going to meet next week, but I just want you to like, just jump into the story and see what comes. And then, so he's not the man that's like, I've got all the answers, do A, B, and C. But it was more of like, what did you find? Like, how did God show up for you? What was he teaching you? And then from there, it was beautiful. The, yeah. The, what came out of that? You know? Yeah. So Jared, what's next? The C is confidant. The confidant is the opposite of the provocateur. The provocateur pokes a hole in logic where the confidant is asking about your feelings um, and how you interpret something. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's often that warm blanket. It makes you feel really great about your life and your situation, everything else. It can feel like validation a lot of the time because the coachy often will like meet with the coach. And then when they have a confident conversation, uh, walk away saying, I feel so much better about life. And the coach will say, we didn't solve a single thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, because all they did was express the emotions that they were dealing with. Um, Elder Bednar was at uh, Silicon Slopes Tech Summit recently, which is a big tech conference in Utah that happened. And, and he said that, um, quote, if we can stop yelling long enough to listen, we can work things out. And listening to work things out is a confidant. How do you feel about this? Where are you coming from? I think about uh, if you go back to like missionary work, you might like Bible bash, right? Let's compare the scripture versus this one. What if instead of competing against each other, you were just to say, what does the scripture mean to you? How do you feel yeah. you know Jesus? How is Jesus represented in your life? And hearing those people out without trying to prove anything is what the confidant would yeah. do. And imagine there's a sense of like, not just listening, but just being okay with what they're saying and just yeah. sitting with it. Like you may interact with somebody and they're just like, and that's why I think Joseph Smith was a fraud. Now, naturally you want to be, wait, wait a minute. He wasn't a fraud, right? You want to jump in there yeah. and defend him, but just be like, wow, like I can see how that's that, your you can, perspective. How you can be led to that. that, that how does that make you feel? Yeah. Tell me more about that. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, and then they, they're feeling this, this is a safer place to lean in and, and go out, maybe go on an exploration, right? Yeah. Like, what, what, what's happening? And that really is the, the crux of the confidant is creating um, trust in a safe place, right? Because um, I'm not going to tell you my deep, dark secrets if I don't think that, that, you'll, that you'll keep that confidence that, that I trust you enough to mm -hmm. share that information with you. Once that trust is established, that's where you can get into the meat of um, what could seem as really challenging questions. Like I think about a member of the church who is in LBGTQ community. Mm -hmm. um, how do you identify? How is it for you when you come to church each week? Like those things, most people would probably step far away from. But when that trust is, is established, confidant is a great question to pull them in because they feel seen and cared about. Yeah. Where again, sort of contrasting that with if you shift to educator and be like, let me tell you about the doctrine of the yes, church. Right, like, exactly. Let's be clear. Let's and suddenly they're like, I am never coming back here. Right. Like, and so I think in, you know, there's a time and a place for all these, but yes, to, exactly. that may not be what they need in that moment. Right. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. So. Great point. Yeah. Anything else uh, with, uh, go ahead, Matt. Yeah. I was just, I was going to segue us into Transformers. Let's do so, it. Yeah. Um, so Transformer is, is the turning point. So uh, I like to use Transformer when someone's gone through something difficult and I, I have them reflect on that, right? So tell me, what, tell me how this experience made you better. What's the gift in you going through this, this trial? Um, it can also, it can be reflective that way, but it also can be a, a forecast, right? Someone comes in and says, I'm really having a hard time with, uh, you know, you, you mentioned pornography before. I'm mm -hmm. really struggling with pornography. Well, I can help you and, and let's think about six months from now. Six months from now, who will you be if you can overcome this? And it helps them to, to, to see that future and then to work towards it. Um, Transformer typically uh, is used when it's, it's post a trial. Um, I'm coaching someone who lost their job and it was very emotional. And, and you know, after three or four sessions, I said, think about who you were that first day. And think about who you are now. What have you What have you gained in that? How have yeah. you become a better person because of that? And um, it's really just helping them to see that that um, the change that comes about because of the trials and the and the hard times, and even even through an uh, you know an education process, right? Oh, you just finished You just finished school. You just graduated from college. Um, how has that made you a better person? Yeah. You know, it's just that that's 
you're identifying the transformation that's taking place. Gotcha. So and maybe a little more reflective of like, yeah. let's just take a moment, pause, and look back. Yeah. Right? Interesting. So you think about like the prodigal son, mm -hmm. right? Very transformer style in a couple of ways for each person, right? The one son who remained that was choosing all the right things had a transformation that they went through when their brother came back. Mm -hmm. But so is the brother who sinned and repented and came back to the father, right? They transformed and became better. And so that transformer is acknowledging and transmuting the pain to then allow us to see our future potential. And so the brother who remained in the prodigal son had to swallow his pride and realize that he, you know, had somebody else in the picture now. And while he had made better choices, he still had to overcome some pride that he was dealing with. Yeah. And after he did that, then he saw a better version of himself yeah. and who he was becoming. My mind goes to just the power of, of reflection, even like in a, like an activity, for instance, or of like a youth activity, right? That those by um, by the time the youth get to the end of that Wednesday night activity, they may not recognize the transformation that happened. And so by you sort of pausing and taking a moment to reflect on that transformation, they may have this epiphany of like, oh, yeah, you know, I got here. I was quiet, cold. My arms were folded. I was leaning against the wall. And now I'm in this group of friends laughing like something happened there. Yeah. And for them to see that, like actually maybe youth activity isn't all that bad. Maybe I should come next week or maybe I can come on Sunday or, you know, yeah. they're suddenly realizing something's happening here. I can lean in. This is cool. Right? Yeah. Cool. All right. So we got these seven transfer or no, that's one of them. We got these seven <laughs> coaching styles. Yes. Right. Yep. Um, so t what's the next step? I mean, I've got some questions, but where do you want to take? So us next? the next thing that you got to keep in mind is, it, that's hard to do is you have to ask questions instead of statements. Mm. Um, when you are in that coach seat and somebody is coming to talk to you, if you use statements and you go to like more educator, you can use a statement or question in any style. But if you think of like that educator mindset of let me teach you something, people, it might go in one ear and out the other. They might not retain it. But when you ask a question, it allows the coachee to have to formulate a statement of their own, which deepens the knowledge and their personal conversion to what's being discussed as well. Um, so I would recommend everybody uses questions. We've also sat in those really bad Sunday school lessons where it's just, what's the correct answer in my head? Mm -hmm. That's not what this is. This is a discussion to allow the coachee to come up with their own solution. And there is no right or wrong answer. It's whatever conclusion the coachee decides to come to. Yeah. I really liked what you shared about the bishop that sends the, the person back with a story. Mm -hmm. Right. Here's the, here's, here, read these two chapters and then let's meet again next week. Because that could be, you know, the person could come in and, and depending on their, their, what they look like, what the scent, the feeling that the bishop gets, it could be any number of questions, right? Um, but it is a tell me how that, tell me how studying this made you feel. What did you gain from that? How has it changed you? Hmm. You know, really diving into this story, how have you become better because of it? You know, you can use all those different styles. Um, number one, based on what the coaching needs, but then instead of turning that into, okay, well, what this is about is X, Y, Z, and you should have learned this and you need to be more of this. It's just, how did that make you feel? Hmm. Yeah, how did just... this experience of focusing on one story in the scriptures, how did that change you? Yeah, it's powerful. Well, Kurt, would you, would you like to receive some coaching? All right. Do you do want it. do you have questions that you want to ask about the styles um, first? So I guess what my main question, we can either do the coaching first or get to it later, but I, I'm always, I, I'm just thinking about the leader who's like overwhelmed. They're on the treadmill hearing all this and they're like, okay, so like next time, like I'm supposed to like suddenly shift into this one. Like what if, like, what do I do? Or how do I even prepare um, and, and use these things? Or do I have to go through some extensive training program to really use these? I mean, what would you say to that person who feels a little bit overwhelmed by it all? Um, I would say if it's something that you're really interested in doing, write the styles down somewhere, you know, have the, have each one written down and then just think about those in, in different, those different situations. Um, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be a professional coach to be able to use these styles. Really. It's just when you're sitting down with somebody, what are the aggregated contextual considerations? What are the things that you, what, what is everything bringing us together to this point at? Mm -hmm. And what does this person need? Do they need me to, to bring them in? Do they need me to drive them? Do they need me to help them 
um, see the transformation that's taken place? Do I need to explore a little bit? And it just based on that, then you ask a question. And it can be as easy as, you know, I want to explore that more, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or what, what do you think I could do to, to help you to, to rally forward, right? It doesn't have to be a, 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 you know, professional, respect, certified coaching style question. The idea is just what does the coaching need? And ask a question that's that's in that style that you think is appropriate. Love it. I think I would say, um, one, you're doing a great job running on that treadmill. Like, keep it going. <laughs> Maybe turn it up just a little bit, a little right. faster. You can do this. I believe in you. Very rallier <laughs> comment, right? Uh -huh. um, but the, the Savior was the perfect coach. And if you study the Savior's life and the way that he did things, you will see how he adjusted what he was doing for the needs of who he was talking to. And for you that's listening, you are already doing this. Like I, I promise that you are. When you talk to your kids, you have a different approach than when you talk to somebody else and mm -hmm. to their friends because you already know how to have emotional intelligence and adjust. Um, and I imagine as you're listening to this podcast, you're thinking, um, you know, that provocateur sounds scary, poking a hole in somebody's logic. I don't, I don't want to do that. To which I would say um, you can totally do it and do it once. Um, I was lowest in all my coaching styles and provocateur and I psyched myself up, right? Ready to have that first provocateur question. And when I asked that question, the coach I was talking to said, that was a really great question. And they answered it and the world did not end, uh -huh. right? It continued forward. And so if there's something you're thinking, I don't know how to do that, test it out. Give, give it a shot. Yeah. Um, you probably know that you're really good with one. You might be a great confidant and everybody spills their guts to you all the time. Continue to do that. Try one different style and just adjust it a little bit to see what are the outcomes. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking like, uh, like you said, write them down or, or because many times it was like, you know, I default to that bishop experience of like, oh, yeah. and that, that guy's coming in again. Like I've shared those four scriptures with him. I always share and I told him to do ABC and he did that somewhat. And I don't know what, I don't know what to say to him. Like, what are we going to talk about? And to <laughs> sort of reflect on these and being like, you know, I've, I think I've approached this as a rallier for a while. Like what are a couple of questions of being that provocateur yeah. that I could, that I could start with, or how can I help him explore a little yeah. bit more? Right. So it sort of helps you reset maybe those interactions that keep come back to you. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and if, try it differently. Right. Yeah. Um, so and, maybe we can give some example questions to everybody. Yeah. Let's, let's, do let's do it through uh, let's give you some coaching. Okay. Let's do it. Um, so Matt and I'll just kind of tag team in here and this is the game. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to ask you a question. And before you respond, we're going to do a quick timeout and you have to guess which coaching style is it. Okay. Okay. And we'll help you along so the way. My brain's going to do 10 different things. Okay. Got it. All yeah. Right. <laughs> well, like it, we'll make it clearer, clear. Like we okay. ask the question and if it wasn't clear enough, we'll, we'll clarify. Love it. Yeah. Okay. So Kurt, what is something you would like some coaching on today? Time out. So what style is that? What style uh, is that? What oh, is something so you games? would like? Yeah, we're oh, in it. We're doing. What is something Game you like coaching uh, on? Explore? Yeah, because yeah. you could say right now, how do I play video games better? You could say, how do I do my calling better? You could say, how to be a better parent? We have literally no idea. You can direct this anyway. That's an explore question. Yeah, or it would be provocateur. You may say, so I notice you haven't been very engaged in church, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Again, it may be true or not. You'd be like, hey, wait a minute here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm engaged in church. <laughs> so, uh, okay, cool. So where are we at? What's something you want okay, to coaching on? Something, <laughs> I would, um, uh, let's uh, talk about my relationship with my eight-year-old Taysom, who I love deeply, mm. but is much too like eight-year-old Kurt. And so we clash a little bit, you know, and uh, it's... <laughs> It's a tough road at times. Is that a fair place to go? Perfect. Okay. Sure. Um, you're looking at me like I'm supposed to oh. ask the next question. <laughs> so what have you learned about Taysom? Taysom. Taysom. What have you learned about Taysom recently uh, that has taught you a few things about what he's gone through? Um, Time out. What's the, what's the oh, style? Yeah. <laughs> um, what have you learned it, about Taysom recently? Is it explore? Because you're, I guess any. It's, we're going to do different styles okay, each so time. Okay, so this is educational? Educator. Yep. Okay. This educator. is the educator. Oh. Yeah. And so now you've- What have you learned about yeah. Taysom? Um, so I've learned that, uh, I've, I've noticed he's been very um, engaged in like drawing, which I loved as a mm. kid, right? And so I love seeing him, like walking in his room and catching him like deep in different drawings and mm. just getting at it, you know? So that's cool. How do you think um, learning more about uh, 
art together would help deepen your relationship with Taysom? Oh man, I mean, time out. Okay, what yeah. type of question is that? <laughs> um, how would your relation? How would it, art help improve your relationship? Is that, is that the rallier? Not no. a rallier. Close. You're close. It's the sister to rallier. Uh, the educator. Nope. The um, strategist. I'm almost through the list now. I, uh, I was going for transformer. <laughs> okay, transformer. Like, and maybe okay, I'd say yes, it a little yes, different yes. way. How would art, you and art together with Taysom, improve your relationship? Okay. Right? Like, how would it become better through that medium? Like, how would a transformation through art? Yeah. Like, that's where you're, you're going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I would say that uh, obviously we would, you know, I have a love for art and I have a skill set in art. So, mm. you know, I could definitely be a mentor role and, and really, you know, draw with him. Yeah. So if you're his mentor father figure, why have you not used art or thus provocateur. far? Provocateur. Oh, yeah. did you feel How that? How dare you? <laughs> about flip this table. Uh, <laughs> um, so what was the question again? The, um, <laughs> the, <laughs> if you know art, um, why? Uh, and you're the mentor figure, why haven't you used art uh, with yeah. him up to this point? Uh, you know, I just get busy with his mm. long, after, end of the long day, and I probably should, but I don't, you know? And, that's so when you when you crawl into bed at the end of the night and you realize that you didn't do anything to make that connection, how does that make you feel? Uh, that, Time out. What that was that? Is, uh, that was a question. Um, when you crawl in bed, I want to say transformer, you but no, how do you, you're bouncing around. How does it make you feel? Oh, the feeling. Rallier. Confidant. I'm horrible at this Conf game. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, you're confidant. doing great. Okay. No, you're yeah, doing great. a little bit vague. It's two on so. one. So confidant. Confidant is about feeling. Yeah, you just want like. You're checking in on my feelings. Like, yeah, right? like, exactly. So how does it feel when I crawl into bed at night and I like I feel like uh, some ambivalence? So like, man, he's growing up, and I'm gonna miss it if I don't engage there. And right. Ah. So, so what can you do to fix it? What type of question is that? Oh, I, fix what, it. What kind of what kind of strategy uh, would the, you employ? Uh, the strategist. The yeah. Strategist, yeah. right? And uh, so what can I do to fix it? I mean, obviously. Let's like just make it like part of our bedtime routine. Like every night That's we're gonna great idea. spend ten yeah. minutes, fifteen minutes, let's draw, right? Yeah. Wind down that way. What if you did it too and I'm stepping outside just a little bit, but why don't you did it do it as like, you know, you draw a square and he fills in another part and then you fill in another part and then it's the two of you creating oh, yeah. art, one, one piece of art like together. That. Yeah. So, Kurt, when will you do your first art with him? The rallier. Rallier. Yeah, buddy. Next step. I'll do it tonight, Jared. Yeah, okay. let's go. So. <laughs> okay, so awesome. right there, you received a question in each coaching style. Um, from your experience as the coachee, what were the, kind of the emotions that you went through as you experienced different styles? You know, really um, – it it really helps me kind of get a well rounded look. I felt like I you know if I was looking at all angles of the of the situation, right? And where it's like, because I think the correct me if I'm wrong, but the temptation is, you know, you you want to just just go sh straight down the wormhole of strategist. Yep. And yeah. we're just gonna hey, you know what you should do strategies. tonight before you Taysom goes to bed, you should draw with him. Yeah. And yeah, so go do that. Go and do then that. it's sort of like we're done here, I guess. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thanks that'll a lot. be that'll be two hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. But that's because you are in a strategist mode. Right. Right. Yeah. And so if you're always in the strategist and always trying to fix it, you mentioned earlier that like have you seen the video? It's not about the nail. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Classic. Right. We'll so link to it. It's phenomenal. You gotta watch it. But like in there, the husband is being a strategist, trying to solve the nail in the head. And the wife wants a confidant. She wants somebody to listen and not solve anything. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have to tailor it to the coachee mm -hmm. because the coachee may not want to remove the nail from the head. They may want to just let you hear what's going on. So so tell me about that dynamic of like in those, when you're interacting with that coachee, like, like how can you tell like, oh, I'm, I'm going down the wrong path here. Let's regroup and go down a different path or... Is that okay? You just sort of regroup anyways. So um, I'll give maybe an extreme example that comes to my mind. Bishop is talking to a youth and the youth comes in for a, an unscheduled appointment and the bishop leads with, so you're looking at pornography, aren't you? Provocateur. Provocateur. <laughs> and the youth says, no, I'm not. I'm actually having a hard time with my relationship with my parents. That bishop would not follow up with, why are you having problems with your parents is it because you're not looking at or what you know i don't know what it is right <laughs> i don't know i don't know what i'm supposed to say i was trying to go provocative what's a good follow-up to that yeah no it's good we're not bishops so yeah we're not, obviously 
Um, but like, <laughs> if, you, can, is, if you continue so in that provocateur thing of, yeah. well, why aren't you improving your relationship with your parents? It's probably because um, you're secretly looking at pornography. Yeah, right? boom. <laughs> See, that was so much better. You nailed it. That's why you're the host. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's not good, right? When that you says, I, I, no, I'm actually here to talk to you about how my parents and my relationship with them, what do you think that bishop would switch to? Uh, the... The uh, confidant, The right? confidant. Yeah. Oh, how are you feeling? That What's going really on? Hard, that right? sounds really hard. Yeah. And then it, it really could be a transition to, into almost any style, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. it could be, oh, tell me, tell me how that feels. Tell me what you're feeling, or um, what have you learned about your parents, right? Help me understand what that means that you're having a hard time with your parent, right? That's three different styles off the top of my head that just are different than provocateur. It's really you're you're kind of asking the same question, but it's with this different with a mm. different style, different tone. And there are times where you need to stick in the same style, and you should just have an entire coaching session that way, and you should never pivot, right? And that's okay. It's all about knowing the needs of the coachee. So that's why the framework is: what do I know about the person right now in the circumstance and every, all my aggregated contextual considerations? Pick a coaching style. I'm going to start with provocateur. I'm going to ask a question. Um, and then I'm going to see the response. The response was not what I expected. I am now going to go back to the beginning of the framework and say, okay, now that I know that didn't work, which coaching style now? Mm -hmm. Try it out. See how it goes. You may stay in it. You may pivot to a different style. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's uh, two questions come to mind, which aren't necessarily later, but let's go with this one. Like the, like if you had like a, like when someone that you've never coach with i'm just thinking of that appointment that walks in or you're having that ministering interview with a, a brother you don't necessarily know is there a a good question or two to like just start with i default to explore yeah that's okay, where yeah. i usually start i usually if someone if someone reaches out to me and says hey i want to come in and i want to i want to sit down with you and talk to you i'll usually i'll usually just sit there and like wait for them right uh -huh. <laughs> just, a good grin on your face yeah just, just like, like you, you scheduled this meeting so yeah, yeah. but yeah i think explore is a, a great what would you like to talk about today mm -hmm. to start with yeah, yeah. and then yeah. from there you may pivot to a different one because and... you see for what sure. they say yeah, yeah. it could yeah. lead you a lot of different directions you may continue and explore for a long time yeah and then the other question is uh, around the provocateur one that seems i mean again that's the uncomfortable place even for the coach right mm -hmm. and for the leaders like yeah. hey, let's just let's start with every other one and if we <laughs> have to go there we will but if we have time because like there's such this i think naturally this may be the case for all all leadership or whatnot but as a church leader you want to be like the rallier you want to be the guy that promotes faith you know you just got to reinvest in the church and it'll be great. Um, but, and so going to the provocateurs, sometimes there's that resistance where I kind of think, you know, the, um, the person maybe is coming in and struggling with, with doubt, you know, in the gospel and for the, for you to sort they're, they're expecting you to sort of shift in that rally or, well, just read your scriptures, pray. Um, and so what, what would the, I, I guess I want to make it more realistic, uh, for leaders, like what were the provocateur? I think a good provocateur question in that situation, at least the one that came to my mind was, when was the last time that you had a sincere, honest conversation with your father in heaven? Hmm. When's the last time you really prayed? Mm -hmm. And when they say, I haven't for a while, why not? Mm -hmm. What's holding you back from conversing with your own father? Gotcha. Yeah. 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 And, and this is a, I took a, a sales training years ago. I was working in sales and there was this uh, strategy they talked about. And it was a little bit in this column of provocateur where if a, if a person says, well, I'm thinking about going with this, the competitor, you know, he's like, great. They're fantastic. Why don't you do that? You know? And then sort of, they're like, well, I thought you were going <laughs> to yeah. convince me not Deflection, to. Right. Yeah. And so almost being like, in the, in the end, there's this resistance. I want to be the bishop. So like, maybe you should go inactive. Yeah. Why don't you, you know, but that nonetheless, you're not, you're not saying going provocateur to push them a certain direction. You're no. just saying, let's just yeah. see where this goes. Yeah. Right? Have but, you, Kurt, received hard feedback in your life? Yes. Um, how has that shaped you into who you are today? Oh, yeah. That's crucial. It's transformed my life. Yeah. It's it's crucial. Why is it crucial? Because uh, it, it helps me gain self awareness, which mm. I only can look this way out of my eyeballs. You know, I can't. I rarely see myself or 
how other people perceive me. So if you were the bishop in your ward, wouldn't you want that same thing for the people in your ward? Yeah, absolutely. That's why you have to embrace provocateur. That's why you have to lean into it and ask Mm -hmm. those questions because it creates that self-awareness and it lets you see things that Mm -hmm. you were unaware of before. Yeah. It's it's identifying the blind spot. Mm -hmm. And And it doesn't have to be a nasty, it doesn't have to be uncomfortable and, and, you know, finger in somebody's chest provocateur yeah um it's in my mind provocateur is just about getting someone to think of something from a different perspective Mm -hmm. right seeing a different path seeing a pothole right it's it's not it's not oh why are you such a jerk all the time it's just (laughs) hey when you you know it it doesn't have to be that so if we go back to that example of the youth going to the bishop saying i want to talk to you about my parents a provocateur question that's not harmful is have you talked to them? Mm-hmm. How are they doing? Right? Yeah. Like, what did you learn from their experience? I mean, that's not rude or harmful, but it's just saying, have you even had the conversation? Yeah. Because if you haven't, it's a great place to start. Right. Strategist. Yeah. Because I think there's Pivot. this maybe this feeling of with proctor, you almost have to like punch him in the gut while you do yeah. it. Like almost an insult. Like, not at all. Well, maybe it's because you're stupid. Have you considered that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wait a minute. Like, that's very provocative, yeah. a provocative question, but. Uh, Again, you're not yeah, like no. trying to attack him or, mm. but to really, you want to just really look at it. Like, well, yeah. haven't you talked to your parents? Like, why not? Like, that seems like something you yeah. should consider. Right? And the other thing to kind of keep in mind, I think where provocateur is important is coaching once again is not top down. It's side to side, it's mm. bottom up, it's every direction. And I think you, I think that leaders in the church today are getting a lot of questions that are bottom up provocateur questions. Why can't we do this? Where in the doctrine does it say that this is not allowed? And that's where Jesus was so good at using provocateur and teaching us that you can coach any direction that you need to um, and create that safe place because provocateur comes from a place of love. I'm asking this hard question. And instead of saying, how dare you ask if, if we can drink coffee, why not say, I'm so glad you're here feeling safe enough to ask. Mm -hmm. Let's have a discussion about it, right? Like look for the good. The provocateur is this isn't a hard question. I should run the other way. It's what's the gift in this moment to be able to have that dialogue. Yeah. And I appreciate this. You know, you say coaching side to side. I mean, that alone, regardless of the different coaching styles, like just starting from that cadence is is crucial because sometimes, and I even, uh, I struggle with even the setup of like a bishop's office. Like I'm behind this Cadillac yes. desk. <laughs> yeah. And here's my, you know, I'm like, I'm in the Oval Office. Welcome. Like it, suddenly you're, it's up down. Like I am the authority in the room. And we obviously believe in authority and whatnot, but for them to really be on, go on this journey of under, understanding their situation, finding solutions or whatever it is, it has to be that side to side. So really for a leader to think, how can I make this more side to side rather than up, you know, top down? Which also makes you think if you are in a leadership position in the church, how can you empower those that that are also called in your presidency or in other positions to help carry out some of that workload and go have some of these conversations? Mm -hmm. Um, We shouldn't keep everything so close to the chest. We should be delegating that amongst others because we're all capable of being great coaches. Mm -hmm. Um, We just need to empower the people around us to have the discussion. Yeah. Love it. Um, anything else we're missing? Concept? Idea? Um, I think the only other thing um, to address is just uh, uh, one of the things that you can do with a question is you can make it either direct or indirect. So a direct question is, why did you do that? An indirect is, why why could you have done that? Or mm-hmm. why might you have done that? Um, and I think about these as as where the focus is. Right. Um, when we, the first question that we asked in the coaching conversation, what's something you'd like to talk about? That's very indirect, something, anything, whatever, where we could have gone direct and said, what's something about the podcast that we could give you some coaching on? Mm -hmm. That's a little bit more narrow, right? Uh, what coaching do you need to help your son Taysom, Mm -hmm. Taysom Hill? Is his middle name Hill? (laughs) It's not, it's actually, his middle name is Kurt. Actually, oh, well, great he is named okay, after Taysom Hill. I'm that guy. Okay. <laughs> and there's no reason not to be that guy. Yeah. Because he's. Right? Uh, yes. Just amazing. very. Uh, that, that was a confidant. That yes. You just did that. That was great. Boom. Anyway, so. Yes. 
<laughs> love it. Is there any, you know, we talk about provocateur. Is there any other style that you find people resist or that's like the last place they want to go? Or I think that Transformer is hard for a lot of people because Transformer is two-parted. The first part is you see the potential, that light at the end of the tunnel. How much better will your relationship with Taysom be as you infuse art? Fast forward six months, you're doing mm-hmm. art every night. What's your relationship look like? Your potential's high, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I can see that. But the other part of the transformer is transmuting it. It's pushing through the discomfort and the pain and acknowledging that it exists. Um, a great coach will help you when you are transmuting pain in transformer realize that it is um i think about it like the force it's just part of the force it's over there it's over here it doesn't control you you don't control it it's just part of what god created for us and when and you kind of mentioned earlier we have those conversations with someone we can go provocateur and they say i don't believe in joseph smith or the transmuting of that is there are people this this plan that god created gave us choice and there are people who choose to see things different and that's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Right. And you kind of like live in that moment instead of going to like the knee jerk. Oh, I'm going to fight or flight, go provocateur on you. Mm-hmm. You just say, I'm going to see that I've got some things I'm working through. I'm going to live with those things and I'm going to work it out as part of the force, know that it's there. And then I'm going to be able to see the future potential that I have. And um, so often in transformer as coaches, we we high we go really hard on the the potential, and we go really fast on the on the transmuting of that pain. And we need to go deep into that. Like, mm-hmm. why do you feel this way? It's a lot of confidant questions yeah. about helping you see what's going on and creating that doubt in your mind to then help you unlock your future potential. Yeah, wow, that's powerful. Really helpful. I'll give you an example of that if I mm-hmm. can. Um, so my oldest son has cerebral palsy. Um, and when he was first born and got that diagnosis, it was really hard, right? We thought about all the negative things to it. Um, but then there came this point where we had this, this transformer moment, my wife and I, and we got to this, we, you know, I, I, when I present on the Gallup strength finders, I talk about weakness and I show a picture of, of my son, Max, um, who loves podcasts, by the way, he wants to, he wants to be a podcaster. So maybe I'll have to connect you yeah, to That's him. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, I talk about, you know, I ask the question is cerebral palsy a weakness and funny enough, nobody really ever says, oh yeah, it's terrible. But you know, I, I go through and I show some of the things that he's done in his life and I'm like, it's not a weakness. That's a superpower. You know, and I remember I one of the a coaching I had with Jared when I talked to him about a difficult situation and something that I felt like, you know, like a diagnosis. And he said, gosh, what a great superpower. And now you know what it is. And at first I was like, what? What are you talking about? And then as I embraced that, I was like, yeah, it is a superpower. Right. And it's that's what I love about the transformer is it's taking those things that are hard in our life and turning them into to a blessing, you know, um, I like to think about uh, stoicism and and the obstacle is the way and and yeah. nothing is good or bad until thinking makes it so is what Shakespeare said and um, I love being able for people you know this person I'm coaching who lost their job now being able to say would you be where you are today if you hadn't gotten fired and they're like no and this place is amazing awesome so I want to ask you in terms of we talked early about this. Even, you know, there, it's not just these one-to-one interactions. It's really, it's a cultural thing. You're yes. building a culture of these different styles, right? Um, I'm just thinking like different meetings, like even in ward council, if you're the bishop or bishop member, you're leading ward council, you can go to these different styles at different points uh, to stimulate revelation really, right? And yeah. and, and really get the, the thoughts out of their head into the meeting to consider, right? Anything you would add to that or... Every single conversation is an opportunity to provide coaching mm-hmm. and to be thoughtful about it, right? And how you can help those people, those coaches, whoever they are, advance where they need to be. Yeah. This podcast today is a great example of that. We've used every style multiple times. Yeah. And we've had a lot of different emotions and a lot of like it's led the dialogue a lot of interesting ways that like Matt and I weren't prepared for, mm-hmm. nor were you. But it's because we followed the needs of where we needed to go together. Yeah. So yeah, definitely embrace those things. And um I think a common pitfall that leaders make is that they feel they have to educate. Um, and the opposite of the educator is, is kind of that explorer. Mm-hmm. It's what could be. 
And you don't have to have answers. As leaders, we so often think we have to have the answer. I have to be the smartest person in the room. I'm the presiding authority. I better as well know the answer to this. When the truth is, that's not right, right? Mm -hmm. Like we can say, I don't know, what could, what else could we do and empower those people around us, especially as volunteer uh, ministers, right? Mm -hmm. We are, we are not paid professionals in, in the church and we don't have to have answers. We can just be authentic and real to who we are and who we're talking with. Yeah. I also just think like, uh, even like as a bishopric or Lord Council is preparing sacrament meeting for the next few weeks, right? Of being like, how can we, what does the ward need? You know, as, yeah. as a, do they need more, a more provocative, you know, experience there? Do they need more educational? Like, do we need to bring the stake patriarch in to talk about patriarchal blessings? Yeah. Or do we need to maybe have a, some diverse views talked about, yeah. you know, to, so we're sort of in a wrestle or, or the, we just need the, the confidant, right? We just, I just want to like put my arms around the ward and sacrament me and say, this, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and to really be intentional about even yeah. meeting. Because so. those questions are helpful, right? And mm -hmm. if you, if you were in that situation saying we need more diverse opinions, then you, you may have to go to your stake president or whoever it is and say, Hey, I want to put the Relief Society president on the stand for this meeting. What are the regulations around that, mm -hmm. right? And like, why not? Like, great explorer question. Um, how do we get more female presence and voice heard when over 50% of our uh, demographic in our church are, are women? And asking those questions are not a bad thing. Yeah. They're little, they're, they've hit in every single coaching category. Awesome. If there's like if people want to wade deeper into these waters of this of the respect coaching styles, what resources or where would you point them to learn more? Uh, Dr. David Morelli um, is the creator of this. Uh, his company is called Owl Hub, and so I'd recommend you go take a look at owlhub.com, or you can connect with Matt or I on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. We're those LinkedIn business nerds that are out there, but we'd love okay. to connect with everybody. <laughs> we'll link to your profile. So Matt, as you been on this journey of uh, coaching and learning, especially about Christ and this coaching. How has this journey helped you become a better follower of Jesus Christ? Um, that's a great question. And I think, you know, for me, it's, it's after learning this and then being able to go through this, the Savior's life and study the questions that he asks and understanding that when he asks a provocateur question, that he's doing it out of love and he's doing it so we can explore our own feelings about it. Right. He doesn't ask a question, um, you know, with, with a, a simple answer. It's almost always something that you really have to go deep on. And to me, it just makes me realize how much the savior cared about cares about us and, and how much he wanted us to learn from the example that he showed. And, um, he's just super cool. Great coach. Jared, how about you? How's this journey brought you closer as a, or helped you become a better follower of Jesus Christ? Um, Jesus was perfect. And Jesus, when we look at leadership and how we can become better leaders and individuals, right, in our own path, we look to him. And he used these styles and he did them flawlessly. And he did them for the one. And so I feel like the way that we can be better is reaching out to the one is by coaching them for what they need, just like he would. And that will make us not perfect, but it'll make us really good leaders that people will want to not only follow, but be around. And it's because when they're around us, we will lead them back to the savior as we do what he would do.